you guys are right. So the, the white one could either be the big W, big W, or big W, little W plus. And, if, and that is if this type of inheritance is dominant, right? If this was co-dominance, then you'd say, um, okay, whenever it's big W, big W, then it will be white. If it's little W, little W, be purple. So sometimes you will see that you have both of them. And in that case, you would have a big W, little W plus, which you would actually represent also as a, a uppercase when it's co-dominance, since one is not dominant over the other because you see the expression of both, then the representation is both letters in uppercase. But in this case, we know that the white is dominant over purple. So you guys are right that the purple would be the, the little, little, no, the recessive, recessive. And then the white is either this one or this one. So good, so far so good. You're like, okay, review and genetics, cool, I like genetics. But then it gets more complicated than that, right? So what Barbara Macklin talk saw is that she saw variegated corns. Okay, variegated is this spotty thing. You see that in plants sometimes, you know, like green vegetation that sometimes has like lighter green on, on the leaves. It either is because that is variegated or because it has some virus in it. But oftentimes it's the genetic makeup of the plant. So she saw this and she's like, okay, I don't understand because, okay, this one I understand, you know, it's either homozygote or heterozygote. This one is uh, homozygote recessive. And, but how about these? You're like, okay, maybe this part is, either homozygote dominant or and or heterozygote and then this part is homozygote recessive you know like all right that could be true except that this whole thing came from one fertilization how can you have this chimera um so that's the part that she addressed and that's that the amazing things that she said okay i have an idea I think that the DNA is jumping around and it's changing, it's dynamic. So once you get that DNA fragment, it doesn't stay the way it was when this was the, the egg was first fertilized. The DNA is shuffling and people are like, oh, come on, lady. But actually she was right. So. That's the part that I like, that she came up with this idea that's completely crazy, observing corn, and uh, they see, you know, this is if it has ramifications in medicine. So, I don't know, I love plants. You know, you can play with plants, nobody's going to complain about you being mean to the plants, and then many of the things you learn from plants, you can apply to animals. So, she's, she called them, um, well, I don't know what she, we call them jumping genes. That's just like one way of referring to them. But she called these the DS for dissociation and AC for activation. So she didn't just think there is this one thing that jumps around. It's even more complex than that. And then it will take like three slides for me to walk you through her idea. Uh, and she's like, okay, these things, they jump around, they break the gene. And then when the dominant allele gets, gets broken, then and it's no longer expressed. And then you get the expression of the recessive allele show up. So they're like, yeah, sure, lady. So the, the DS and the AC were the first described transposons. And it took 40 years for people to, to see that her idea had its merits. And, and, and she actually got the Nobel Prize for Medicine and Physiology working with corn. It's pretty amazing. Um, and sometimes the Nobel Prize takes time for people to earn it. Uh, just last Friday, I watched a talk by a lady that worked on, on chirping, which is something with lasers and physics. 
and she did her PhD in the 80s and she got the Nobel Prize in 2018. But that's because she did theory and whenever you do research on theory, there has to be an experiment that validates your idea. Then you are like, oh, that idea was right, like the Higgs boson. So those things get Nobel Prize. And uh, in hers, there was the application already, but it took 40 years for people to see that her ideas were actually true. It's not that it was just an idea and there were no data to validate it. All right, so let's understand how, you know, what, what was her idea. Let's go this by parts. So the big W is the white allele, that's the dominant allele. As I said earlier, the little w plus is the purple allele that is recessive. And corn is deployed, it can be any of these three things. And you're like, okay, so far so good, I knew that. All right, so now let's let's see this. This is some DNA fragment. It could be, we could think about this as this is a a chromosome, and then this is physically separated. That's another chromosome. It could even be the same chromosome, but really far away. But just to make it simple, let's think this is one chromosome, this is some other chromosome. And uh, you're going to learn about the AC element, as I mentioned earlier, the activator element. But we're going to start from simple to complex. So in this case, the DS, which is the dissociation or dissociator is not transposable. Does that mean? It means that that DS, that DNA fragment does not jump around. Okay, it, there, it cannot go anywhere. Maybe this is like your toddler. It cannot move around. It needs somebody else to go pick him or her up and move it to another place. So the DS is, uh, this is a type of transposon that it doesn't go anywhere, it just stay, stays put that part of the chromosome. This big W is, is the white dominant allele, and it does get expressed. So let's think about this as, okay, this allele does not get influenced by the, this DS, because the DS is a chunk of DNA that is put there, and doesn't affect the expression of this. So let's assume that this gets expressed. So what would be the color of the of the kernel? I'm going to make a poll here because this part is a little um, complex to understand and I wanna make sure that you 